Welcome back to this series of videos on the hidden Markov model. We're in part 10 of this video series, and today we're going to talk about motivating the Viterbi algorithm. We've been talking about a particular kind of model called the hidden Markov model, and we're working through primarily a source material from a paper by Rabiner called a Tutorial on Hidden Markov Models and its Application to Speech Recognition, although we're not working on the speech recognition part. We were motivated by the hidden Markov model and a hypothetical example of a robot moving through an apartment. Maybe it's a Roomba, maybe it's a pet, maybe it's some kind of a helper assistant robot. Whatever it is, it doesn't know where it is because it can't have access to GPS because it doesn't have access to the sky. And so it needs to keep track of where it is in the apartment using a hidden Markov model, where it's going to. That apartment's floor plan is shown in the upper left, and then we represent it as a hidden Markov model with this state transition diagram that you see here. And what this is supposed to represent is each one of those red squares is a state that the robot can be in. It can move from one state to another according to the lines that connect them. And when it's in each one of the states, it observes the floor. And it has some a variety of different floor colorings that it can observe. And the robot has to figure out where it is by observing the floor colors and keeping track of how it's moved throughout the world. And so together, this forms all the components of a hidden Markov model. If you'll recall, a hidden Markov model consists of five different parameters, n, m, a, b, and pi, n being the number of states that you have, m being the number of observable symbols that you can see, for example, floor colorings, a being a transition matrix that says, what is the probability of moving from one state to another? It's zero if you can't move from one spot to another. B is what is the probability of seeing one of those symbols given that you're in a state? So for example, given that you're in the state right by the front door, what's the probability of seeing wood floor, carpet floor, a rug floor, some other kind of stone floor? And finally, pi. Pi is a state, is the probability of being in a particular state for your first observation. Then when you're given a sequence of observations, for example, this sequence, O1, O2, O3, up to OT, there are a number of different questions that you might want to ask about your model as a result. So I kind of put these different components of the model down below just to remind us of the problem that we're working with. Previously, what we looked at is we looked at the first question. The first question is, what is the probability that a model would generate a sequence of observations? So you know a particular the layout of a particular apartment, you know what floor colorings there are, and your robot sees a particular sequence of, of, of observations, and you want to say, well, what is the probability of the robot seeing that sequence of observations, regardless of which way it moves through the world? And we answered that with question one. The key to answering that, what is the probability of seeing observations given your model of your apartment, the key to that was something called the um, forward-backward algorithm. And what we knew is we knew that what we, what we developed was a solution to the question of what is the probability of a sequence of observations given lambda, and that was solved by summing over all the possible states the value of the variable alpha at the final step, capital T, of our observations. Our alphas formed a lattice, a lattice that moved from left to right as we went from observation one up, up to observation t. And it formed a representation of the probability of being in a given state regardless of how you got there. And by calculating them recursively or inductively, we were able to efficiently figure out what the probability was of an observation sequence irrespective of what state sequence generated it. That alpha term was called the forward term, and we had a corresponding term called beta, which was the same algorithm, but working from, rather than starting at the beginning observation, working at the final observation and working backwards. So alpha says, what is the probability, alpha t of i says, what is the probability of seeing the first lowercase t observations and then ending up in state i? Beta was, what was the probability of seeing, of being in state SI at time lowercase t, and then seeing the next set of observations up until time capital T. This alpha term is called the forward term, and the beta term is called the backward term, and either one of these could generate the probability of observations given lambda. 
but they formed the basis of the forward-backward algorithm. And the forward-backward algorithm was the first of the three key questions that can be asked about hidden Markov models. What's the probability that a model generated a sequence of observations? Today we're interested in the second key question that you can ask about hidden Markov models. And that is, what sequence of states best explains a sequence of observations? This is really um, a very common question that is asked about hidden Markov models because the nature of the observations is that you can observe them, but what you're interested in is the states that generated them. So for example, if you were using a hidden Markov model to represent spoken languages, spoken language, the observations might be the um, actual frequencies that you're hearing, and the hidden states might be the components of words or phenomes that would generate those sounds. And so you can observe the sounds, but what you really want to recover are the words that generated them. And so the second question gives us the ability to, to answer that. What sequence of states best explains a sequence of observations? For our robot case, this would say, well, given that we see a sequence of rug coverings, how, how did we move through our apartment such that we saw them? Very, very common and probably the most common question that's asked about hidden Markov models. So to elaborate, our robot might be in, in the world. The robot doesn't know where it is except by observing the observations of floor coverings. It sees a sequence of floor coverings and it wants to try and figure out what path did it follow in order to see those floor coverings. Well, at, at, as it considers them, it realizes that possibly it moved through one or two or three or four different, any number of different paths through the world. And all of them are possible because all of those floor coverings could possibly be seen, maybe with a very low probability, but nevertheless possibly be seen in each one of those states in turn. Well, how do we figure out what is the best sequence of states to explain that given the model that we have? That's the second question. So the first thing we have to ask is, what exactly do we mean by best? Because the nature of the hidden Markov model is that we're seeing observations that could be generated by many different states. And so when we say best, we have to be very clear about what we mean. So what I want to do is I want to consider two different versions of what best might, be, might mean, having motivated the second of these key problems, and uh, we'll solve them in the next video. Thank you for your attention.